Hi, this is Dr. John Bergduff. In this video, we're going to explore using Venn diagrams as a tool to analyze survey questions. So when you conduct a survey, what often happens is that you end up with a rather huge mass of data, lots and lots of numbers with lots and lots of facts to them that are hard to kind of analyze, hard to figure out how what the data says. And a tool that can be used sometimes to make sense of that data is Venn diagrams. So let me look at an example here with you, and I'm going to explore how we might use a Venn diagram, and then we'll, we'll show it. So a survey of Lone Star College students revealed that 65 liked Billie Eilish, 65 liked Lizzo, and 65 liked Lil Nas X. Now, 45 liked Billie Eilish and Lizzo, 50 liked Billie Eilish and Lil Nas X, 40 liked Lizzo and Lil Nas X, 35 liked all three singers, 15 liked none of the singers. And then there's some questions. How many students were surveyed? How many students liked Billie Eilish only? How many students liked Lil Nas X and Billie Eilish but not Lizzo? How many students liked exactly two of the singers? So where you want to start with this is you want to sort of examine whether the data that you have might be classifiable into sets. And here I think that is pretty clear. There's several singers named and people who like those. So we can create a set of people who like Billie Eilish, Lizzo, and Little Nas X, Lil Nas X. And I guess the first thing that's important to do is, is really kind of identify how many different sets that you've got. And I think the three sets simply apply to the three singers. So we can create a set of people that like Billie Eilish and a set of people that like Lizzo and a set of people that like Lil Nas X. With the knowledge that these sets are overlapping and so we're going to have to represent those sets with every possible overlap. Let's do that. So here I've taken just the data from the question, and before we even attempt to think about um, how to answer the, the four specific questions, we're just going to organize that data. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a Venn diagram the universe, or the universal set, will represent all of the students who got surveyed. And then I'm going to represent three sets. One, two, three, and show them overlapping in every possible way. And each, uh, each one of those sets will represent the fans of one of the singers. So you have Billie Eilish, and we'll put her over here. And Lizzo, and let's say we put her over here and Lil Nas X, and we'll put him down here. So everything you can see overlaps. Now what we will do is we're going to eventually put a number in every region that you see in this Venn diagram. The easiest way to handle this is to look first for any piece of data that involves all three sets. So as you look down the list, you'll see that some of them only talk about just Billie Eilish and some just Lizzo. Then there's some that talk about two at the same time. But the one that I really want to focus on is this piece of data right here, where it says that 35 people liked all three singers. Because that would represent the intersection of all three sets. And that would be right in the middle. So what I'm going to do is put the number 35 right in the middle to represent those are the people that like all three. And it's going to help me as I back off from there. So literally, you do back this off. You start by looking at what data involves all three sets. Um, and then you look and see, is there any other data that involves all three sets? And in a way, there probably is. Uh, this last piece of data right here 15 like none of the singers, well, that means they can't belong in any of these sets at all, and that gives them a place to go here. Those are the 15 that would be outside the set altogether. Now, having looked at the sets that involve three, uh, three sets, 
begin now to look at data that involves two sets. So what do I mean by that? Let's start right here. It says that 45 people liked Billie Eilish and Lizzo. Notice that in my Venn diagram, Billie's circle and Lizzo's circle cross each other. And the temptation is to say, oh, the 45 goes right here. But that turns out to be wrong. Let me erase that, get rid of that real quickly. Because the 45 encompasses the 35 who like all three singers, plus this region up here that involves the people who like only Billie Eilish and Lizzo. So the two regions that overlap Billie Eilish and Lizzo have to add up to 45 people. So if you've already got 35 accounted for, and there's 45 total who like Billie and Lizzo, there must be 10 more. And these folks like Billie Eilish and Lizzo, but they don't like Lil Nas X. Hope that makes sense. We will do the same thing for every other piece of data that involves two sets. So here's another one. 50 liked Billie Eilish and Lil Nas X. So you can see that the that Billie's circle and Lil Nas X's circles overlap. We've already accounted for 35 people who like all three. That's right there in the middle again. How many more are there to get up to 50? Well, 50 minus 35. There's 15 more people, and they would be represented right there. People who like Billie Eilish and Lil Nas X, but don't like Lizzo. Finally, there's one more piece of data that involves all three sets. And that's right there, that 40 people like Lizzo and Lil Nas X. We have already counted for 35 of those. So again, we don't want to put a 40 right here. If we do that, we're neglecting the fact that we've already counted a bunch of those folks. So we want to get rid of that and realize that the 40 has to be the sum of those two regions. So there are exactly five more people. So you begin with the data that involves all three sets. You move to the data that involves two of the three sets. And the last thing you do is look at the data that only involves one set. Because you're going to be seeing that you're going to be, you have to be careful not to overcount here too. 65 people like Billie Eilish. And so the temptation is to say, oh, a 65 goes right there. But 65 has to encompass all of the numbers that lie within Billie's circle. And we've already accounted for 10 here. 35 here, so that's 10 plus 35, 45 so far, 15 here, 45 plus 15 is 60. So in the areas where we've already put numbers, we've accounted for 60 of the 65 people who like Billie Eilish. And then subtracting, we see there's only five more people left. And those people would represent people who like Billie Eilish only, but not the other two singers. Let's move on to Lizzo. So same story here, 65 has to represent the sum of all the numbers within Lizzo's circle, and we've already accounted for 10, 35, 10 plus 35 is 45, plus 5 is 50, 50, 65 minus 50 means there's 15 more people, and they would re that would represent people who like Lizzo only. And then finally, same token, Lil Nas X. 65 people like him. How many do we have accounted for so far, however? 15 plus 35, that would be 50. Plus 5 is 55. So we've accounted for 55 people who like Lil Nas X, who also happen to like other people. That means there would be 10 more who like Lil Nas X, but don't care for the others. Now, if you follow that pattern of looking first at all the sets that involve three sets, second at all the data that involves two sets, and last, the data that involves only one set, what should happen is you should see a number written in every region of that Venn diagram. And I think you see that, every region has a number. Now, does that answer any of the questions? No, we haven't answered a single question so far. All this does so far is just organize our data. But if the data is organized in a Venn diagram, 
then the, the questions turn out to be easy to answer. Let me go to another slide here. And in this one, I recreated the Venn diagram that we saw on the previous page, but just to focus on the questions altogether. How many students were surveyed in total? Well, that's not hard to do from the data here. There's a number in every region. We add up all those numbers. Now, let me back up for a minute because you might be tempted to say, to think, oh, to get the number of people surveyed, I'll add up all of these numbers. But the problem with that is you would be overcounting um, people many times over. And this way you will not. Just add up the numbers that you see. So let's take a look at that. Uh, there's 5 here, plus 10 is 15, plus another 15 is 30, plus 30, 35 rather is 65, plus 5 is 70, plus 15 is 85, plus 10 is 95, plus 15 is 110. How many students were surveyed in total? 110 adding up all the numbers. How many students like Billie Eilish only? Well, we sort of got at this when we were looking at filling out the chart in the first place. The people that like Billie Eilish only would be this group of people right in here that are outside of Lizzo's set and outside of Nas's set. So how many uh, students like Billie Eilish only? Five. How many students like Lil Nas X and Billie Eilish, but not Lizzo? Let's see if we can figure out where on this chart those people live. So because they like Lil Nas X, they'll have to be in Lil Nas X's circle, so they'll have to be within this circle. Uh, they also like Billie Eilish, so they have to be within this circle. So you're beginning to see that the people that like both Lil Nas X and Billie Eilish would be the people in these two regions right here. But in addition, they don't like Lizzo. So the only folks that we'd be looking at are these folks right here, and there's 15 of them. So that's 15. Finally, how many students like exactly two of the singers? So if we look at this one, any of these regions that are sort of out in the, the more outer regions, these people, these people, these people, they only like one singer. The, these people in the very middle like three singers, and these people on the outside don't like any of them. The people who like two singers would be represented by this region right here, this region right here, and this region right here. So we would add up these three numbers, and those would be the people who like exactly two of the singers. 15 plus 5 is 20, plus 10 mm. is 30. And as you can see, once the data is organized into a Venn diagram, then it's actually not hard at all to answer the questions and any question that they ask you just looking at that diagram. So I hope this will be a great example of a tool that you can use to analyze survey questions. Thanks very much.